Hey guys, Icy Cat here. Today we are going to be talking about the newest attacker for the Hong Kong CTU. Ying's Candela Cluster Charge brings a whole new element to the table for objective clearing, and in this operator profile we're going to break down her loadout, her gadgets, and, and how to get the most out of using her. Ying is a two-speed, two-armor attacking operator. Choice of primaries include the T95 LMG with an 80 round drum fed magazine. It has highly stable accuracy with low recoil and a fast reload speed. Or she can go with the 612 combat shotgun. This is a bullpup style semi automatic shotgun with, with a six round cylinder cartridge that you can swap in and out. While the reload speed is a little faster compared to other shotguns, you will have to be reloading more often due to that lower six round total capacity. Besides her standal pistol variant, she will also have the choice between a breaching charge or smoke grenades. And I'm going to give the recommendation to the breaching charge hands down because that is going to pair very well with her Candela cluster charge. So let's talk a little bit about that device. This can be deployed in a variety of different ways. And the first of those is going to be something that's somewhat similar to the way Fuse's cluster charge goes off. She can set it on a wall and it will push through to the other side. This also works for any wooden barricades or castle armored barricades. This is a timer based device, so the longer you hold down the gadget interaction button, the longer you will set the timer for. There are three settings on the timer, each one a little bit longer than the one before it. There are three lights on the gadget, each will light up once you've reached that next stage of the timer status, and you will also see the reticle on screen reflect that as well. Even at maximum time though, you don't have more than a few seconds before the charge goes off. So be ready as soon as you set this up on a wall or a door to go ahead and move in behind it very quickly. That's why it makes a good recommendation to pair this with a breaching charge. Deploy the candela charge on a wall, set off your breaching charge and follow in right behind. And this is a really solid tactic for a couple of reasons. First off is that she has a special visor that grants her immunity to the effects of her own device. She cannot flash herself, but it should be noted that she's still susceptible to other forms of flash grenades or Blitz's flash shield if she looks at those. This only grants her immunity to her own device. The other reason it's very important to follow in right behind your own cluster charges if possible is that while it does flood a larger area of effect with the flash charges, they also wear off somewhat quickly. They're only going to be effective for a few seconds. So strike fast while you can still take advantage of that time of disorientation. Soft breaching walls and barricades aren't the only way that she can deploy her gadget though. In addition to that, she can also roll the candela charge along the floor. Again, the length of the timer here plays an important role because the longer it is set for, the further it will roll into the room before the detonation occurs. The candela charge can be slowed down as it's rolling on the floor by barbed wire. So if you have that in there, it's not going to get as far as it would have otherwise. Also, if Bandit has a battery on any of those barbed wires, it will instantly destroy the candela charge if it comes into contact with it. If you're fast, the charge can also be taken out by either shooting it or using any type of explosive device. The candela charge can also be countered by Jaeger's ADS units, but how it's countered is going to depend very heavily on how the gadget itself is deployed. If an ADS unit gets line of sight on a candela charge, it will treat it as one single projectile and take it out with one shot. However, if you soft breach a wall or a barricade, it doesn't have line of sight on the candela charge itself, so it instead has to track the smaller individual spread of pellets that come out of it. In that case, you will burn out all three of Jaeger's ADS units if set up in a room, provided they have line of sight on that multitude of charges. Then Ying will still have a couple more in reserve and be able to throw them in without any other problems. So depending on how the candela charge is deployed, will have a very big impact on how effective Jaeger's ADS units can respond to the threat. Okay, so so far we covered using it as a soft breach on walls or barricades, as well as being able to roll it along the floor or underneath barricades. But she still has a few more options available for how to deploy the device. The next one is an interesting, somewhat quirky behavior because it doesn't always work as expected all the time, but you can actually roll the device along a wall and it will kind of stick to the contour of that wall. And if there's a drone vent there, it will kind of go into the drone vent then and just follow it around that corner. Sometimes this doesn't always work as expected. If there's any kind of debris in the way, or if there's anything like a frame of a door, even if it's very, very thin and small, if there's any kind of object in the way, even something that you wouldn't necessarily think could stop it, sometimes can. So try to get some practice with it so you can understand the situations where this will and won't work. 
but this can be really handy if you want to throw it into a drone hole, but lining up in front of it would have otherwise exposed you to possibly some dangerous lines of sight. The final way that she can use her device is she can throw it, just like any other kind of flash grenade. And again, you can use the timer to your advantage here. You can set that timer for any of the three stages it has available when you throw it, or you can just tap the button and throw it out immediately and it will go off pretty much right away when it hits. This can be very situationally useful if you're dealing with somebody in an unexpected spot and you want to quickly turn the tables on them. That can be very effective when you encounter an unexpected roamer. Something important to note is that mute signal jammers will have no effect on the Candela cluster flash. And here's why. Fuse's cluster charge has a remote detonator. There's a wireless signal that mute signal jammer interferes with. But the Candela flash charge doesn't have that. It has a mechanical timer inside of it instead. There's nothing for the signal jammer to interfere with, and so the gadget will still go off as intended. Of course, you can play solo with Ying when attacking, but if you're launching an assault and an objective, she's really going to be enhanced by pairing up with other operators. Anybody that can breach a hole in a wall is going to be really effective because once you throw that in there, you're going to want to have line of sight on those now disoriented defenders. But a particularly effective combination comes from running with Fuse. Synchronizing Fuse's cluster charge with Ying's Candela flash charges can make a whole lot of destruction in a room that the defenders will have a hard time dealing with and find themselves completely overwhelmed. If you can time it properly, Ying can essentially blind everyone in the room, and then that second or so later when all the Fuse cluster charges go off, they can't run away because they can't see where they are and where they're going, and you can wind up with a few dead enemy bodies very quickly. Overall, Ying is a very solid operator. With her highly accurate and stable light machine gun, breaching charges, and her Candela flash charge, she can certainly wreak a lot of havoc on a defensive objective location. Tomorrow, we'll be taking a look at how to get the most use out of the newest defensive operator, Lesion. So come back and check out that operator profile. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and be sure to click the notification icon so you're alerted as soon as I upload new content. Also, be sure to follow me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.